In this video, I'm going to show you how to fix reconciliation discrepancies inside QuickBooks Online. A reconciliation discrepancy is when you go to reconcile the bank account and it tells you that there's an error with the beginning balance. And it tells you which is the last month that has been reconciled and your beginning balance is off. When you actually compare your beginning balance with your bank statement that you have in front of you, it's completely off. There's a process where you can click on this link that says we can help you fix it and it walks you through all the transactions that are wrong. And then in this video, I'm actually going to show you how to fix each and every one of them. So I'm going to go into one of the bank accounts that I have already reconciled and I'm going to go ahead and screw up the reconciliation. I'm going to cause a whole bunch of problems so you can see exactly how the user, how the QuickBooks user can screw up a current reconciliation. So I'm going to click on the gear menu on the top right and then I'm going to click on reconcile. Notice that this reconciliation has no issues. There's no error message or anything letting you know that there's problems here. Here's my beginning balance, which matches the ending balance of the last reconciled statement, which is right here, last reconciled statement 1031. I'm actually going to click on that and it's going to take me to the report that tells me everything that was included on the very last reconciliation. So I'm going to go ahead and mess up a couple of these transactions so we can actually create a reconciliation discrepancy. So I'm going to start with this deposit here. And what I'll just do is I'll just delete it. So I'm going to click on more and then click on delete. And then I'm going to click on yes. Okay. So the first transaction I messed up by deleting. Let me go into a check over here. And then what I'll do is I'm going to avoid this one. So I'm going to go to more and then go to void. Try, try again, void, yes, okay, perfect. So now I've deleted one and voided another one. Let me go into any of these transactions here and I'm gonna change the dollar amount. So I'm not deleting, I'm not voiding, I'm just modifying the dollar amount. I'm gonna come in here and change this to 208. So I increased it by $100, click on save. See, it gives me warnings, right? You shouldn't do this, this uh, transaction is already reconciled, you're going to mess up reconciliation. Like the average QuickBooks user looks at this and says, yeah, yeah, whatever, and click, clicks on yes. Okay, so we've done that. We delete it, we avoid it, and we changed the dollar amount. Let me go into another one. And what I'll do is I'm going to change the source account. So I'm going to change the source account from checking into savings, and then click on save and close. And then I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to go into the register. So I'm going to click here on banking on the top left. And then I'm going to go to go to register. And then I'm going to pick any of the transactions that have already been reconciled. You see that R over there. I'm going to manually modify it. So I'm going to click on that, click on it until it becomes a blank and then click on save again, ignoring the error message that is telling you what are all the possible things you can do to screw up the reconciliation. So we went ahead and messed up the bank account in many, many ways. Let's try to reconcile now. So I'm going to click on the gear menu and then on reconcile. Okay, so we're on the reconcile screen and it says your account isn't ready to reconcile, your beginning balance is off, and then there's a link that says we can help you fix it. So we're gonna go ahead and click on that link. And on this screen, you're gonna have all the transactions that were messed up, basically the transactions that essentially were changed after the banks were reconciled. So there's five transactions here, and here it says change type. Sometimes it's very clear in what was changed or sometimes they'll say multiple changes and that will require you to see the audit trail to see exactly what happened. So let's look at the first one here. That was a $54, $55 amount here. It was a check. We're gonna go ahead and click on view for the history. And then we're gonna see uh, the changes that were made. So I'm gonna open this one, which is the second on the list, which is the last one we probably did before we messed up the reconciliation. So notice what's marked here which is the last date was it was reconciled and it was attached to the checking account. Let me open the latest change and there's the change right here. It says that now it's pointed to the savings account instead of the checking and it's now obviously not cleared because we changed that status. Let's go to the second transaction here, the one that says checking from 1003 and it says the amount was changed. So let's go ahead and look at uh, the history. We click on view. And then let's look at the last date. So the last date it was reconciled and it was 1808. Let's look at the latest change. And there it is. This was voided. They're very clear here. This was voided and now the change was 
to zero. So in QuickBooks, when you change the dollar amount from whatever it is to zero, uh, that's the equivalent of a void, right? So when you void, you're not deleting the transaction, all you're doing is zeroing it out. So QuickBooks sees it as a change of dollar amount. It doesn't really see the void itself, although there's voided, the word voided is on the memo. That's the only way that QuickBooks really knows. But it's the dollar change that triggers the change on the audit history. Let's look at the third transaction here, an expense from 905. And it says right here, really clear. It says it used to be 108 and now is 208. There's a dollar change of $100. That one's pretty clear. We can click on view and look at the audit trail as well and see what the change was. And obviously what's marked in yellow is the only change here. It was just a simple dollar amount change. Let's look at the fourth one here, a credit card credit for uh, on 1023 for $900. And it says here that it was unreconciled in the register. This is when I went in and removed that little R from the check register. That's what messed that one up. And if you look at the last one here, this deposit for 868, it says here it was deleted. If I click on view for the audit trail, I can actually see the last transaction before it was deleted. So on the ones that are deleted, specifically these, are, I'm probably gonna have to print this out so I can reconstruct it. And let's go ahead and start by fixing this transaction. So anytime a transaction has been deleted, you essentially have to recreate it. So I printed all this information out so I know what's supposed to be in here. And then I'm gonna recreate that deposit. So I'm gonna go to the gear menu and then click on, so I'm gonna click on the quick create button and then go to bank deposit. I essentially have to recreate the transaction that was deleted. Now this one was dated on 10.09.2019. And the total dollar amount that we're looking for is 868.15. In the printout, um, it's telling me which payments are matched to that deposit. So I'm just gonna select them and essentially recreate that transaction. Okay, I selected all the deposits related to that transaction. According to my printout, there was also a transfer uh, for $200 on that very same deposit. So I'm gonna select here the bank account that was transferred and this is negative 200. And I'm basically just copying the information that's on the deposit. Once I get to the exact same dollar amount as the previous deposit, I'm just gonna hit a save and close and I'm done fixing that one. Let me go back into the reconcile screen, go back into the list. So that last one is not, it's still showing there because we haven't re-reconciled again, but at least for now we know that we have recreated that last transaction. We're gonna go ahead and go backwards from bottom to the top. So let's fix this one, the one that was uncleared on the register. So this was a credit card credit for $900. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on view and then click on the transaction itself so I can see it. Unfortunately, from this screen, I cannot mark it cleared, but at least it's important that I know exactly what the transaction is. So I have the date, I have the dollar amount, and that really that's all I need to know. So as long as I have that, I'm good to go. So I'm gonna close that, go into banking, and then go into the register. I'll click on go to register. I'm going to look for that $900 transaction. It's right there on the screen, very easy, very obvious. But one way to do it is to use the filters. I could use by transaction type, by date, by dollar amount. I could also narrow it down here, assuming I have a really big uh, checking account with a lot of transactions. But for now, I'm just gonna remark this uh, reconciled again. So all I'm doing is clicking on that empty space until it turns into an R, click on save, and then yes, and that fixed that. Let's go back into reconciliation again, and let's fix the rest of the transactions. Okay, so this one went away. Notice that when that one was fixed, that one went away. Deleted transactions won't go away from here because QuickBooks can't connect something that was deleted and then recreate it. But the ones that have not been deleted, those can be easily recreated. This is why we recommend doing a void instead of a delete as much as possible. Okay, let's take a look at this one with the dollar amount changed. So just go into the transaction by clicking on view or clicking on edit, either one works. And then just going back to the correct amount, 108.09, and then click on save and close. And then yes. Good, so now notice that that one went away from the list as well. Let's take a look at this one where the dollar amount changed. Let's open it and go to edit. And this is the one that we had voided. So all I have to do is delete the void and put the previous dollar amount there, 18.65, and click on save and close. Whoops, it was 18.08, so let me go back and 
change that again by going back into the transaction. 18.08. It's useful to have that reconciliation discrepancy screen in uh, another screen or maybe print it out because um, obviously these little errors can happen. There we go. So now we're down to the last one in the top. This is the one that we changed the source account to. So I just go open it, click on edit, and then go back and change the source account to the correct one, which was the checking account, and then click on save and close. Okay. Now that one now has to be re-reconciled or re-cleared in the register for it to go away from here. So to do that, we're going to have to go back into the register and mark it uh, cleared. So let's go into banking, go to register. Let's find that $54 transaction. There it is. We're going to manually mark that one reg uh, cleared, reconciled, and then click on save. And yes. And when I go back to reconcile one more time, and I click on, we can help you fix it. We're down to just that one transaction that was deleted. So as I mentioned before, not possible to make this one go away uh, because once the transaction has been deleted, the one that recreates it doesn't really know, QuickBooks doesn't know it needs to be replaced by that one. So I'm going to go ahead and now add that into the reconciliation. So that's 868.15. So I'm going to go back in here into ending balance and I'm going to re-reconcile October 31st. So I'm going to go here to October 31st, 2019. Again, we're re-reconciling the last month that was reconciled put here the dollar amount. Okay, and this is the dollar amount that we had used to reconcile the last month. Click on start reconciling. And we're only going to select the one transaction that was deleted and re-entered, which is the one for 868.15. Select that one. We're going to go back into zero. If there's any pending transactions there, there are probably the same pending transactions from the previous reconciliation. And then I'm going to click on finish now and done. So then when I go back to reconcile the account, I'm no longer going to have the error and now I'm going to have the correct beginning balance. Hope you liked the video. Click like, subscribe to the channel, add some comments below if I missed anything and contact me or my office if you need any help fixing a major reconciliation problem. Thank you.